All right, so I am out here in Three Creeks Conservation Area, and it's really been quite a nice walk. You know, lots of good trees, lots of good forest. However, this particular spot right here, I noticed as I was walking along that there were a lot of little stumps and things. Like somebody had been coming through and chopping things out, and I thought to myself, what could those be? And then I got close to one of them that was coming up from one of these stumps. Hopefully I can get this thing to, to focus pretty well. If you look carefully, you can see this branch has these funny little dots all over it. I had one that actually had a leaf on it. And this is Eliagnus umbellata, also known as autumn olive. Um, it's related to the another, this is an invasive species. I think it's from Asia somewhere. And unfortunately there's, looks like they've been chopping on it, but unfortunately it keeps coming back. And it's really problematic because it's very, very aggressive and will take over instead of a lot of the native stuff. And it looks like we had this big hickory tree fell down. Another tree fell down and these guys just came into the opening. Um, most of the places that aren't very open don't have much in the way of invasive species. I've been kind of pleasantly surprised. But this particular spot, unfortunately, has had quite a few. Now over here we have native species. This. is actually um, flowering dogwood. And that little s seed head, basically, they used to have fruits on it. And miterating birds um, actually make really good use of the fruits, which is why there aren't any right now, because um, they've all been eaten and gone. Another way you can tell the species is this nice, there's two nice flower buds right here. Now really this is actually a whole inflorescence, and these are bracts. People think of these as petals. Um, but you can kind of tell how close you are to spring, those bracts will start to move. And basically they'll start to open. Right now they are shut tight because it is January. And even though it's been pretty warm, thankfully, our trees seem to uh, be able to recognize that. Anyway, this is a larger one. So this is a um, eastern red cedar, Juniperus virginiana, and the... Um, Flowering dogwood is Cornus, Florida. So they're, those are both native trees and very, very nice ones. And they would actually normally show up um, in kind of an opening like this. So we've got some native regeneration as well as some of the non-native stuff. So I'm gonna... Yeah, there's really not supposed to be horses on this trail. There are horse trails in this park, um, but this is actually a designated not horse trail, but obviously some people don't follow the rules. And not only can it be damaging to the trail, um, but this horse manure can actually bring in some of these invasive species that we have to fight. So we really need to keep them on their designated path. Not against horses, just follow the rules. Is that hard? Maybe. See the sign here? It says hiking. The sign says hiking. No horses. It's not even, you don't even have to be able to read. It's just got a sign. It looks like up here we've got some really cool limestone bluffs. So I'm from Indiana originally, so we don't get too much of We didn't get too much of this. So I get really excited when I see big rock faces like this. Because it's not something I got very much growing up. It was mostly in southern Indiana. And it was very beautiful. Looks pretty feathery. Let's look for this fern. Really only see this. It's from parts of Missouri. There's our Christmas fern. Really nice for January. They're kind of called that because they're usually still green at Christmas. These are so cool. I love these guys. 
These are Asplenium. I forget what the specific epithet is, but it's called a walking fern. And it's called that because at the very end, it produces little plantlets. You can see it better over here. So here's one of these plants, and it produces this long leaf. And then at the very end, there's a little tiny plant. And then it'll land on the next rock down. And that's actually one of the ways that they spread. The other way are these. These are spores. These are spore containers. So these actually burst open. These are leptosporangiate ferns. So they'll burst open, they'll fling spores out somewhere, and they'll make something called um, <clears throat> a gametophyte. And the gametophyte actually produces sperm and egg usually, and um, the sperm actually have to swim. And when they swim, they unite with the egg, and basically they grow into another one of these. Um, but a lot of these going down the rock are probably clones of each other because of um, that walking ability that they have to basically take the tip of the leaf and go down and land on a rock. So really cool stuff. All right, so we're on a different part of the trail. And this looks like it's a creek bed, um, but it's kind of a dry creek bed right now. It does say that this creek is intermittent. We've got some nice big rock piles up here. So this boulder, it looks like, must have broken off from up there, who knows how many, maybe a million years ago, who knows. It's really got some beautiful, rock formations here. And lots of neat plants along the way. Even though it's winter time, that one that's broken looks like it's American basswood. It's really Americana. Go over there and see if that is what it is. Pretty sure though. Of a pretty dry creek bed. There's a big slab of rock down there. Looks like it's been wet not that long ago. <clears throat> Let's see. It's really easy to identify this species in the winter. Yep. It's got this really bright red round bud. The leaves are kind of generic. I don't know if I see any right now but the buds are kind of this red color after it gets cold and a little bit frosty um, alternate. And they kind of have this goofy kind of pseudo-terminal and offside leaf scar going on. This little, let's see if I get it to focus on what I want it to focus, this little dot right there, that brown dot that's under the bud, that's where the leaf was attached. So it's fallen off, and those little dots on the inside, that's actually where the vascular tissue was attached to the leaf. So those are called bundle scars. They're on the inside of the leaf scar. And usually they can actually help you figure out what species it is, but in this case, the buds make it really easy because there's this nice pink and they're kind of offset from where the leaves are. So that's American basswood, Tilia americana, uh, which is doing fairly well, although it's, it's in the Malvaceae. It's being attacked by um, Japanese beetles, which is true of almost everything in the Malvaceae. It's an interesting tree in that um, it tends to occur in clusters like this. A lot of times it'll sucker from the bottom. You get a bunch of them. Wow, you can really see that rock face up there. So pretty impressive in height. Definitely not going to be climbing that. But really cool stuff. And the cool thing is once you identify, start to learn to identify plants, especially in your area, it doesn't become just a random assemblage of sticks and twigs and things. They become familiar and they can kind of 
I'm like friends. Hey, there's a little ant. Um, this guy right here, though, this is Hackberry, Celtus occidentalis. So unfortunately, he's kind of fallen over, or she really, they're both male and female. So, and then right over here, got a nice, it's a little hard to tell because of the lighting. That's a sycamore, Platinus occidentalis. And over here, these guys call these river oats, Chasmanthium latifolium. Very common in these kind of wetland environments. You can tell how this sycamore has survived all kinds of floods and things. Just look at how it's hanging onto these rocks. It's really, even though it's not a very large specimen, it's very impressive. It just looks like it's tenacious, just growing in this just pile of rock. Just a mess of rock. You can see where the outer part of the roots have been damaged. This is all bark that's open, but you can see right here, this is the living edge that's still trying to close it over. It's actually trapped some rocks in here. And some leaves. Some of those are sycamore leaves. This is a really neat plant. Unfortunately, I've been running into some invasive species. That's Perella, beefsteak plant, which somebody decided was a tasty herb and unfortunately it just kind of took over and went pretty much everywhere. So we see it a lot of different places. And I'd rip it out, but it's dead. It's an annual, I'm pretty sure. And um, all of its seeds are already gone, so there's not a whole lot of point. Here's another one of these trees that's hanging on. This one is actually a hickory. Not which hickory? It's harder to tell. Doesn't look like Tomentosa. I'd say shag bark, but the bark looks wrong. There's no leaves on it. So if I were to guess, I'd say black hickory, which is Caria texana. Hickories can be difficult to identify without bark or nuts. So right there, we've got some more. This is the hickory roots going down. We can also see right here. There's a little twig that's from a sycamore tree. So the bark basically peels off on young sycamore branches to look like that. Really neat looking plant. One of my favorites and most people are pretty good at identifying them if they can't identify anything else. Looks like another basswood over there. It might be a little ironwood right there. So it's really neat. You walk in the woods and basically you see familiar faces. Except they're not faces, they're leaves. There's a sycamore. There's another red oak. And there's another sugar maple. Some really cool stuff. Of course, if I knew my rocks, my rocks would be familiar too. There's another red oak chilling out among the leaves. So even though everything's dormant right now, or most everything, quite everything, you can still do a lot of plant identification from twigs and bark, dead leaves on the ground, bits of twigs, 